Good afternoon and welcome to this wonderful wedding ceremony. In order for us to begin, I invite you to stand with me as you are able. Please pick up the blue hymnal that is in your pew, a blue hymnal, and we're going to sing hymn number 400, All Creatures of Our God and King, verses 1, 4, 5, and 7. And so all of us are invited to lift up our voices in praise as we fill this space with the love that Randy and Boyd are here to celebrate. I invite you to look in your bulletins on page three. Episcopal worship is an interactive sport, so if you don't respond, we can't continue. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is God. Whoever does not love does not know God. Since God so loves us, dear friends in Christ, we have gathered together today to witness Randall and Boyd committing themselves to one another and in the name of the church to bless their marriage, a relationship 
of mutual fidelity and steadfast love, forsaking all others, holding one another in tenderness and respect, in strength and bravery, come what may, as long as they both live. Ahead of them is a life of joy and sorrow, of blessing and struggle, of gain and loss, demanding of them the kind of self-giving love made manifest to us in the life of Jesus. Christ stands among us today, calling these two people always to witness in their life together to the generosity of his life for the sake of the world, a life in which Christ calls us all to share. Let us then that they may be strengthened for the promises they make this day, and that we will have the generosity to support them in what they undertake, and the wisdom to see God at work in their life together. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, look tenderly upon Randall and Boyd who stand before you in the company of your church. Lift them up in joy in their life together. Grant them so to love selflessly and live humbly that they may be to one another and to the world a witness and a sign of your never-failing never care. Through Jesus Christ, your, Lord, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God to the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Invite you to be seated for the readings. A reading from the Song of Solomon. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come. And the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm. For love is strong as death, passion fierce as the grave. Its flashes are flashes of fire, a raging flame. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can floods drown it. If one offered for love all the wealth of his house, it would be utterly scorned. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 149, which can be found on page 5 of your service bulletin. We will read responsibly by whole verse. Hallelujah. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise in the congregation of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in his maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise in his name in the dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people and adorns the poor with victory. Let the faithful rejoice in triumph. Let them be joyful on their beds. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. 
Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the one holy and living God, amen. Please be seated. 
First of all, welcome to All Saints, those of you who have not spent any time in our space worshiping. It's a beautiful space. It's wonderful to be able to celebrate this marriage in here. And I think it's cooling off a little bit. Okay, <laughs> good. 1855, 56, air conditioning wasn't a big thing. But uh, we've tried to retrofit a little bit and help us to be comfortable. So on this day, we are here to celebrate this marriage, to celebrate love, to celebrate life, and you all are here to be witnesses, but also you all are here because you are part of what has allowed this marriage to come to be. None of us ever figure out, discover, learn about, and take the risk of entering into love without the help and support of communities of people. And I know that this is true because the way we learn to love first is because someone loves us. Someone responds to us with an act of love. Usually this happens in our childhood when we reach out. Maybe we need food. Maybe we need to be changed. Maybe we need to be held something that we don't even have words for, that we have a need for, and someone in our life gathers us up, makes space for us, and teaches us about love. We cannot learn it on our own. Love is something that is shared. We have that wonderful reading from the Corinthians letter. Love is patient and kind. It's not arrogant or rude. It's not boastful. It doesn't insist on its own way. Love makes space for the other, creates a safe opening and says, come, let me shelter you. Let me give you what you need to live. And in that act, you will experience love. In my ability to make space in my life for you to dwell and thrive and be nourished and grow, you will know what it's like to be loved. And the more we have those experiences, the more we experience love in our lives, we learn how to give it to others. It's this incredible gift, not unlike lighting a candle, and we've got plenty of those, thank you. Not unlike lighting a candle, we can have a single flame, and from it, every other wick in the room can get lit. All it takes is one act of love and it spreads and it grows and that light cannot be hid. That light of the city on the hill continues to be shared. It illumines not just those who dwell there but all those who can see it. And we learn from it. We experience its warmth and we discover how love might dwell in our own lives. This has been my experience of discovering the love between Randy and Boyd. I've known Randy a little bit longer, but I've experienced this light that they share with each other. I've experienced this ability that they have to make space for each other. I've experienced this way in which as they shelter each other, the other one flourishes. As they open up and say, here, I have what you need. Come and find a place to rest or to be fed or to be encouraged or to try something new or to stick your neck out there a little bit and see what happens. And when they do that for each other, come on in. When they do that for each other, they grow. They thrive. The love that they share cannot be hid. It continues to multiply. Those candles continue to grow. In fact, I was over at their house right before Easter. I brought my daughter, who's 10. The decorations were a huge hit. Everything sparkly, everything Easter. It looked like the bunny had been there already. It was still Lent, but that's okay. 
that's all right. It couldn't be contained. There was too much love. We couldn't keep it in the tomb. It just exploded all over that apartment. And people were coming in and out and eating food and sharing the stories. And it was clear that love dwells in this house. And it couldn't be kept in a box or kept quiet. It was something that was inviting other people in. And all of you have been part of that journey, part of that love that has raised up Randy and Boyd and their relationship, raised them up in their health and wellness, raised them up in imagining and pursuing their futures, raised them up in all the ways in which they are being taught and nurtured and nourished in your love. Because I got to tell you, just because we're doing the marriage part today, they still need you, right? It's not like, oh, check that box. Great, got it, love, done. (laughs) This is a lifetime of figuring it out. And so they're going to continue to need all of your support. That's why we get married with witnesses, not just the two of you that will sign the book. Thank you, Lucas and John, for doing that. But for all of you, because in the days and the weeks and the years to come, and those of you who have shared love with another, you know what this is like. You need help. You got to say every once in a while, I don't know what to do. I'm feeling lost. I'm wondering how to share love. I'm feeling like that day when we celebrated is miles away. And how are we going to rekindle that flame? This is where you come back in. This is where you bear witness to the ways in which love has participated in your life. This is the way in which you continue to expand and enlarge that understanding of how it is that we make space for each other. Because Randy and Boyd, I know their household is going to continue to be a place of love. They're going to continue to welcome others in. They're going to want to share these gifts and all of the ways in which that light shines out with all of you, and in their health and wellness, they're going to continue to share their love with you, to teach us how to do it. And in turn, you will teach them. You will explain to them when they hit that first hurdle that all married couples hit, whatever it is, you all will be there. When they need someone to lean on, you all will be there. When they need extra support, you all will be there. And this is how it is that God uses marriages, households, families, these relationships of love to give us a glimpse of how much God loves us. Because even the tiny little fractions of love that we get to experience in this life God has this full, robust, incredible love for each and every one of us. God is inviting us into God's household. God is saying, I have space for you. You are all blessed. If you're poor, you are blessed in my household. If you are feeling sorrow and grief, you are blessed in my household. If you are experiencing a time in your life when you feel abandoned or lonely, you are blessed in my household. That God's love is constantly making space for us, creating a shelter for us, inviting us to find our way home again. And the love that we witness today, let it be a reminder to you, not only of the beloved relationships you have amongst family and friends, but also the beloved relationship that you are for God, that God loves you so much, that God is making vows, pronouncing love for you forever and ever, amen, gathering you up into God's household, welcoming you home, and inviting you into that loving relationship where we are all healed and made whole, amen. So I'm going to invite the wedding party and their 
two witnesses to please come forward. If you guys could move a little more to the middle there. There you go. Nice. One on either side. Very well done. Excellent. Randall and Boyd, you have come before God and the church to make public your commitment to one another and to ask God's blessing. Randall, do you freely and unreservedly offer yourself to Boyd? I do. Will you live together in faithfulness and holiness of life as long as you both shall live? I will. Boyd, do you freely and unreservedly offer yourself to Randall? I do. Will you live together in faithfulness and holiness of life as long as you both shall live? This next question is for the community here gathered. I invite you to stand as you are able. Will all of you here gathered uphold and honor this couple and respect these two persons in their marriage? We will. Will you pray for them in times of trouble and celebrate with them in times of joy? We will. Then let us pray for Randall and Boyd in their life together and for the concerns of this community. Just may let Daniel through. There you go. For Randall and Boyd, seeking your blessing and the blessing of your holy people, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For a spirit of loving kindness to shelter them all their days, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For friends to support them and communities to enfold them, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For peace in their home and love in their family, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the outpouring of your love through their work and witness, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For strength to keep our vows and commitments, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, make us, make us instruments, instruments of your, of your peace. peace. Where there, Where there is, is hatred, hatred, let us sow love. Where, Where there is injury, pardon. Where, Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where, Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where, Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to, as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated as we approach the altar for their vows. Randall and Boyd, I invite you now illumined by the word of God and strengthened by the prayers of this community to make your vow before God and the church. Randy, if you will take Boyd's right hand and repeat after me. In the name of God, In the name of God I, Randall, I, Randall, give myself to you, Boyd. I will support and care for you. I will support and care for you. By the grace of God. By the grace of God. Enduring all things. Enduring all things. Bearing all things. Bearing all things. I will hold and cherish you. I will hold and cherish you. In the love of Christ. In the love of Christ. In times of plenty. In times of plenty. In times of want. In times of I will honor and keep you. I will honor and keep you with the Spirit's help. With the Spirit's help. 
forsaking all others, forsaking all others as long as we both shall live. This is my solemn vow. You may lose hands. Boyd, if you'll take Randy's right hand. This one. <laughs> and repeat after me. In the name of God, the name of God I, Boyd, I, Boyd, give myself to you, Randall. Give myself to you, Randall. I, will I will support and care for you. By the grace of God, Enduring all things, bearing all things. I will hold and cherish you in the love of Christ. In times of plenty, in times of want, I will honor and keep you with the Spirit's help, forsaking all others as long as we both shall live. This is my solemn vow. You may loose hands. You may have the rings. <coughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Bless, O oh God, these rings as enduring signs of the vows Randall and Boyd have made with each other through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Randy, taking Boyd's ring and placing it on his left hand, repeat after me. Boyd, receive this ring, Boyd, receive this ring as, a symbol as a symbol of my abiding love. My abiding love. Amen. <coughs> Boyd, taking Randall's ring and placing it on his left hand, repeat after me. Randall, receive this ring as a symbol of my abiding love. Amen. Placing your hands together. There you go. Get that one in there. Inasmuch as Randall and Boyd have exchanged vows of love, and fidelity in the presence of God and the church. I now pronounce that they are married to one another as long as they both shall live. Amen. You may kiss the groom. Now we're going to bless the grooms. So let us pray. Most gracious God, we praise you for the tender mercy and unfailing care revealed to us in Jesus Christ and for the great joy and comfort bestowed upon us in the gift of human love. We give you thanks for Randall and Boyd and the covenant of marriage they have made. Pour out the abundance of your Holy Spirit upon them. Keep them in your steadfast love. Protect them from all danger. Fill them with your wisdom and peace. Lead them in holy service to each other and the world. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you, and mercifully grant you rich and boundless grace that you may please God in body and soul. God make you a sign of the loving kindness and the steadfast fidelity manifest in the life, death, and resurrection of our Savior, and bring you at last to the delight of the heavenly banquet, where Christ lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand back up. Invite the community to stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
As Randy and Boyd make their way to the back of the church, invite the community to be seated for a moment. We are going to celebrate Holy Communion. And I just have a few instructions because <laughs> like any dinner party, we want you to be comfortable. Uh, the table belongs to God. It does not belong to me. It does not belong to the Episcopal Church. And if you feel called to come forward and receive the bread and the wine, you are welcome to do so. In the Episcopal tradition, if you want to receive the bread, just extend your hands like this. It makes a better landing spot so I don't drop bread on the floor. And if you want to receive the chalice of wine, you may guide it to your lips or you may intinct your bread in it. It is wine. If you do not wish to receive wine, simply cross your arms over your chest. That lets our chalices know that you only wish to receive the bread. If you have an issue with gluten, we have a few folks in our parish with celiac disease. We do have gluten-free wafers. Just let me know and I'll make one of those available to you. Communion, again, is available to all. If you do not wish to receive, you may come forward for a blessing. Again, crossing your arms over your chest, but we don't want anyone to feel confused or like they have to sit and wonder what should I do or what happens next. Uh, this is the very first dinner party that Randy and Boyd are hosting as a married couple and you're invited to the table. Afterwards, there will be more food in the great hall so after our wedding ceremony, invite you to exit through that door after our postlude, and you will find at the top of the stairs in the great hall, a feast has been set. Tables are beautifully uh, decorated with flowers, and there's an opportunity to continue the celebration. So please join them for a reception up in the hall. If you need to step outside, to smoke a cigarette. We had a little conversation about that last night. Many of you know where some of the ashtrays are around the campus, um, but if you don't know, there are some in the Patrick Street parking lot as well as on the Church Street side. Um, so just ask you to look for those as you look for a place to gather uh, and have a cigarette during the reception. Our hymn, while we set the table, is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, number 376. It's in your blue hymnal, 376. I will be setting the table so I can't join you in singing. I'm really counting on your voices. So please let us offer up a joyful song as we set the table for this feast. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Come into his courts with praise, with joy, and with thanksgiving.
Our worship continues on page 11 in your bulletin. Invite you to stand with me as you are able for our prayer of great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets and their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts of bread and wine. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine gave thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our ancestors, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Rahab, Tamar, Ruth, and Mary, God of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit your church gives honor, glory and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. This is the body of Christ given for you. For you are the body of Christ given for the world. Come to God's table and find your place in God's holy family.
Our post-communion prayer is found on page 14 in your bulletin. I invite you to stand with me as you are able, and let us pray. God, our strength and joy, we thank you for the communion of our life together, for the example of holy love that you give us in Randall and Boyd, and for the sacrament of the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that it may renew our hope and nourish us for the work you have set before us, to witness to the presence of Christ in the world, through the power of your spirit, to the glory of your name. Amen. Invite the wedding party to come forward before we process out that we may pronounce a blessing over you and over the community. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth and journey with resilient faith. Alleluia, alleluia. We embody the resurrection story. Alleluia, alleluia.